Don't you get it? You stressed me out so much that I had to go find myself a lover. This isn't my fault. That's not fair. If you were the perfect wife, I wouldn't be cheating on you. I'm off to my vacation with my lover. See ya. Trouble Busters. My name is Helen. I've been married to my husband, Kevin, for three years, and I'm currently eight months pregnant. I can't wait for our baby to be born. I heard that during pregnancy, you can become emotionally unstable because of hormones. But I was doing okay. My friends and family are so supportive of my pregnancy, so I'm able to remain relaxed and happy. My parents and older brother, Alan, are really kind to me, and I get along great with my in-laws, Aaron and Sarah. When I announced my pregnancy, Helen, tell us the news. What is it? Helen's parents are here too, which means it must be big news. I think I know what this is about. Well, let's hear it, Helen, before my husband guesses what it's all about. Right. Helen, please tell us. Don't leave us in suspense. That's right. Helen, please. Thank you for coming over today. I have some really happy news to share with everyone. We can't wait to hear your news, Helen. Could it be? I'm pregnant. You guys guessed correctly. That's great news. We're going to be grandparents. Congratulations. We can be happier for you and Kevin. I'm going to be a very hands-on grandma. Congratulations, Helen. I was so happy to be congratulated by the people that meant the most to me. I appreciated and cherished my happy life, but this total bliss made me uneasy at times. I was scared of losing it all, and I was right to be scared. It had to do with my husband's suspicious behavior. He began to act strangely one month after we were married. What's going on here? Hi, sweetie, you're home. Why are you alone in the dark? Being in the dark soothes me. It helps me stay calm. Nothing's wrong. You don't have to worry about me. All right, if you say so. I'm envious of you because you have the luxury to sit in the dark, deep in your thoughts. Well, I'm out busy with work. You're a housewife. What is there to think about? How can you say that? It's very hurtful. I was thinking about the fact that you're cheating on me. Me? Cheating on you? Don't be absurd. Your imagination is going wild. Maybe you ought to get a job or something. All this free time on your hands is making your mind wander into dark places. I didn't think you were so delicate. I I have proof that you're cheating on me. This is you, right? What do you have there? Don't act all innocent. We've only been married for one month. Why would you cheat on me? I can't trust you anymore, Kevin. You got it all wrong. I did cheat on you, but it wasn't to hurt you. I was going through marriage blues. It was my way of coping. I won't do it again. You have to believe me. But... I'll do all the household chores on my own for a while to make it up to you. How does that sound? I regret having cheated on you. I feel really bad about what I did to you. There's only the one time. Won't you forgive me, honey? You sure this won't happen ever again? Yes, I'm sure. I'm positive. We're finally married. I don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. Okay, I forgive you then. Promise not to let me down again. Yes, I promise. You're the only one that I love. Truly. I decided to take Kevin's word and believe that he wouldn't cheat on me again. I mean, we got married because we loved each other, right? That's what I told myself. Kevin didn't change, and he continued to cheat on me. There were times when I considered consulting with my family or friends, but I was too embarrassed to tell anyone. And because I was surrounded by nice people, I felt that they would worry about me too much if I told them. That's why I kept this to myself. Fast forward to a few years. Kevin, could you please pick up the trash that you leave on the tables? The house is a mess. Is it? Doesn't bother me. Are you for real? We live in a dump. Didn't you tell me before that you'd help with the household chores as punishment for you cheating on me? But you didn't keep your promise. You haven't lifted a finger. Why did you make a promise that you had no intention of keeping? I was just trying to get you to forgive me. I didn't want you to leave me. We had just gotten married. Aren't you glad we didn't get divorced? It was because of my fine negotiating skills that we made up. What is your problem? What's yours? You don't take good care of me. I'm going to cheat on you again. I was now pregnant with his child, yet Kevin refused to grow up. In fact, I felt like his attitude towards me was getting worse as time passed. And I suspected he was cheating on me again with someone new. I didn't have any proof, but Kevin would come home late every night telling me that he was busy with work, and he seemed to be spending a lot of money. He must be buying nice things for his lover. Kevin? What is it, Helen? Are you upset with me about something? Actually, it's nothing. What is it? Now I'm curious. I know something comes to your mind. Tell me what it is. I don't want you to blame me for something later on. If you want our relationship to work, we should be open with each other. Um, okay. I wanted to yell at Kevin and tell him that I knew that he was cheating on me again and that he'd done it several times during our marriage. I didn't know how to ask him for the truth without getting him to make excuses for himself. But we were expecting a baby and I needed him to be more responsible. I needed to teach my husband a lesson. That night while my husband was fast asleep, I checked his smartphone. I was suddenly not feeling well. I felt a chill go down my spine and my throat began to hurt. I then began to cough. I was craving some ramen noodles to warm me up, but because I didn't have any, I decided to go to bed early. I'm home! Wow, you scared me! What are you doing? I wasn't feeling well, so I was laying down. Would you mind making dinner for us? Well, that's good news for me then. 
how is this good news? I don't get it. Your timing is perfect. Hello? Yes, uh, a business trip tonight? I'm sure I can make it. See you soon. You're going to leave me home alone when I'm sick and pregnant? Yes, I'm sorry about that, but it's work. I need to go on a last minute business trip. I'm off. I don't have a minute to lose. Why would your boss call you late at night and at the exact moment that I asked you to make us dinner? I know you'll miss me lots, but I'll come home as soon as I can, okay? You're going to go see your lover, right? I don't think it's work. Not that again. Look, I need to go on my business trip. Can we discuss this when I get back? If you think that I'm cheating on you, you need to show me some evidence. Okay, here you go. Where did you get this? You went through my smartphone? How dare you! I hadn't planned on confronting him, but I was fed up with his behavior. As soon as I showed him the evidence that I had gotten from his phone, Kevin started to lecture me instead of apologize for cheating on me. This wasn't my fault. He was trying to make the issue about something completely different. Okay, fine. I won't deny it. I'm cheating on you. Are you happy now? No, I'm not happy. We're having a baby together. Don't you intend on being a loyal father? What do you want me to say? I know that you love me and that you won't leave me, so just look the other way. That's easy for you to say. I can't look the other way. Then do you want me to apologize to you? Is that what you want? I'm sorry. Are you satisfied now? How many times are you going to cheat on me? When will you be through? Think about our unborn child. This is not a healthy relationship. Don't be so conventional. We don't need to define our relationship as long as we're both happy, right? Can't you let this go? It's not a big deal. I won't leave you so you have nothing to worry about. Don't you get it? You stressed me out so much that I had to go find myself a lover. This isn't my fault. That's not fair. If you were the perfect wife, I wouldn't be cheating on you. I'm off to my vacation with my lover. See ya. You're leaving? Well, I have nothing to hide since you already know where I'm going. By the way, I'm not going to go to the hospital when you give birth. Blood makes me queasy. So can you try to deliver our baby while I'm away with my lover? I'll be away for two weeks, so does that give you enough time? If you need me to be away for longer, I'll just extend my trip. You're crazy. You can't do that. How can you do this to me? Well, you can't stop me. You don't own me. Besides, we'll both be busy when the baby arrives. This is the only time I can enjoy a relaxing vacation with my lover. Please don't go. Don't do this to us. If you leave for your trip now, I'll divorce you this time. Don't try to make me feel guilty by bringing the baby into this. It's not working. Also, I didn't want a baby in the first place. I did this for you. You should be more thankful. Do you understand? Huh? And don't try to threaten me with the word divorce. You say that, but I know you won't actually leave me. If you really wanted to, you would have divorced me by now. I'm serious this time. I'm sure that you are. I need to go now. I'm going to miss my flight to Hawaii. It's been a while since I enjoyed the beaches of Hawaii. I'm so excited. Bye now. And just like that, Kevin left for his trip to Hawaii. I was devastated when I heard Kevin close the door to our home. I couldn't take this anymore, and I was also sick. I started to cough again. I was starting to feel faint, and I needed someone to come and help me. But Kevin was already on his way to the airport. I made my way slowly toward the phone. I was really dizzy, but I managed to ask for some help. Soon after that, I lost consciousness. The next time that I woke, I was at the hospital. Helen, you're awake! Oh, I was so worried about you. I'm glad that you called me when you did. If I hadn't come to your house when I did, something really bad could have happened to you. You shouldn't work too hard when you're pregnant. It's not good for you or your baby. I can come stay with you for a while until you recover. That's right! Please ask us for anything! We're your family! You don't need to hesitate to ask for our help! Yes, thank you. How is my baby doing? Your baby is fine. The obstetrician checked earlier. I'm so relieved to hear that. I was so worried. I felt safe now that my family was here with me. Nothing was wrong with my baby either, but for some reason I couldn't be happy with the situation. I started to cry in frustration and confusion. Helen, what's wrong? Your baby is fine. You have nothing to worry about. I know that, but what is it, dear? Do you want us to ask the doctor to come here again? No, it's not that. By the way, where's Kevin? What's taking him so long? He should be the first one to get here. I hope that Kevin isn't. I understand now. Ellen, what do you want to do about everything? I... I... I knew in my heart that Kevin wasn't capable of changing. He was going to continue cheating on me. I wanted him to learn his lesson and regret the fact that he hurt me so many times. The last straw was when he told me that he didn't want our baby. I wasn't going to forgive him. Trouble busters. Two weeks later... Has our baby arrived? Helen, why did you have to leave us so early? I'm not prepared to say goodbye to you yet. Kevin, where have you been? What's going on here? Helen and the baby, they're gone. I tried to get in touch with Helen today, but she wouldn't answer her phone, so I got worried and came here. Then I found her on the floor. I can't believe this is happening. You're joking, right? Helen can't be dead. This is no joke. You can see for yourself. She has no pulse. Her body's still warm, but there's no heartbeat. This can't be happening. You're right. There's no pulse. 
Charles, what happened while I was away? The police are here. I'm gonna speak with them now. Oh, my poor sister. They didn't deserve this. Helen, I can't believe you're gone. Well, this works out great. Now I won't get told off for cheating on Helen. And I don't need to raise a baby. On top of that, I get Helen's inheritance and money from her life insurance policy. The only thing that bothers me is the fact that I'll have to do the household chores myself. But I guess that's not such a big deal. Now I can propose to Tammy. Hooray! Welcome home, Kevin. I'm glad that I finally got the truth out of you. You seem to be really happy when you thought that I had died. Whoa! You startled me! So you faked your death? I did. I feel great. Thanks for asking. But I almost died because of you. Are you disappointed that I'm still alive? Of course not! I'm so happy that you're alright. I'm glad to see you got of your cold, too. How's our baby doing? I heard everything that you said a few minutes ago. Don't play dumb with me. I recorded what you said so you can't get away with it. Hey, Alan, you can come back into the room now. I heard everything that Kevin said as well. You're a terrible husband of my sister. You can stop lying now. <laughs> You set me up! He then grabbed the camera out of my brother's hands and smashed it onto the floor. What the hell do you think you're doing? Now you don't have any proof that I was acting happy about my wife's death. I'm not gonna say yes to a divorce or agree to pay Helen any alimony. You're gonna continue taking care of me and the house for the rest of your life! Actually, the evidence is safe. You weren't able to destroy it. Is there another camera? You're so deceitful! No, there's only one camera. I don't get it. Where's the evidence then? Actually, the evidence is in this SD card. Even though you broke the camera, the evidence is stored in this SD card, and you weren't able to break it. Too bad for you. Damn it! Kevin, I think it's time for us to get a divorce. There's no point in us staying married. If you won't agree, I'll take this to court. The video from today isn't the only evidence that I have. I have proof of your infidelities from the past, too. I won't let you do this to me! You're like a housemaid, but I get you to do all my chores for free! I don't want to give that up! Kevin began to scream again and tried to grab the SD card from Alan's hand. Yo! This way, dude! Alan then threw the SD card to Aaron and Sarah, who were now standing at the back of the room. From their expression, you could tell that they were livid with their son. They both glared at their son. We know what you did to poor Helen. What you did is unforgivable. We didn't raise you to become scum. Hi, Mom and Dad. This is all a big misunderstanding. How is this a misunderstanding? Explain it to us. We'd be very interested to hear what you have to say for yourself. I'm sure that if we sit down and have a nice chat, you can all come to a mutual understanding. What is there to understand? Do you want to get what you can out of Helen, but you're not willing to return the favor? Did I miss anything? Do you see the sad expression? on Helen's face. You did this to her. I don't think there's any sort of misunderstanding here. Um, um. It's all our fault. We should have raised you better. You're right. From today, you're going to start living with us again. We need to re-educate you. Mommy and Daddy are going to take very good care of you, son. First, we need to teach you some basic manners. You're not listening to me. This is not what it looks like. I only cheated on Helen because I was so lonely. She never paid any attention to me. This isn't my fault. Not your fault. You're a grown-up man. You need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. Don't try to blame Helen for what happened. Continue this conversation at home. You're coming with us, Kevin. Give me a chance to explain. Sounds like you're making a bunch of excuses for yourself. You're so selfish. You're not ready to become a father yet. You need to work on yourself first. And we're going to make you pay the alimony and child support for Helen for the rest of your life. That's the least you could do for her. And don't assume that you can get married to anyone else after you divorce from Helen. We won't allow you to get married to anyone else. Why are you trying to ruin my life? We don't want you to ruin another woman's life by marrying her. Helen's parents were devastated when they found out how you've been treating their daughter. They're so depressed that they can't get out of bed. You need to make up for all your mistakes. What did I do to deserve this? Sarah and Aaron shoot out their son endlessly. Kevin had told me before that his parents were angry about something. They could be very scary. Kevin was now in tears and he was looking my way. I guess he wanted me to help him, but I wasn't going to do that after all he put me through. Helen, you need to do something about my parents. You don't really want to divorce me, do you? I know that you still love me. And don't you think that our child would be happier with both of its parents around? I'm a grown up. I don't want to move back in with my parents. Helen, help me out here. I couldn't believe how desperate Kevin was. It really turned me off. How could he still think that I might take him back? No can do. You're on your own. I can't spend another minute with a man that was celebrating my death earlier. I'd kind of like you to not show your face here ever again. I'm filing for divorce and there isn't anything you can do to change my mind. I have the papers right here. Let's fill them out right now. What if I say no? I won't agree to a divorce. No way! You don't get to say what you want anymore. Not after today. We won't allow it. Mom, what are you doing? How long are you going to make Helen suffer? Fill out the divorce papers now. Do what your mother says, Kevin. We'll do everything in our power to stop you from getting your way. 
few minutes later, Kevin gave up. He ended up listening to his parents and filling out the divorce papers. Sarah and Aaron were proud of themselves for getting their son to do the right thing. Kevin was completely wiped out and he didn't react to anything anymore. I had to think about what I was going to do now that I was a divorcee. Kevin, you still have a lot of repenting to do. This is it over. Then my doorbell rang. Someone was at my door. When I opened the door, I saw a woman standing there. Kevin, is it true that your wife and baby died? I can't wait to get married to you. So you're Kevin's lover, huh? No, I'm not. I'm just a friend. You just said you couldn't wait to get married to him. I didn't say that. You must have misheard me. Please don't lie to us. We're sick and tired of being lied to. You're having an affair with Kevin, right? It's not an affair. Kevin and I are in love. It's true love. He didn't tell me that he was married. I thought that he was single. You seem to know about Kevin's wife dying. Doesn't that mean that you knew he was married? Did I say that? You must have misheard me. I don't recall saying such a thing. Besides, you don't have any proof, do you? Let me have a look at his phone. It looks like he messaged you earlier to say that his wife died and that he wanted to marry you. I suppose this is the proof that you wanted? You knew that he was married and you chose to have an affair with him anyway. What do you care? It's not my fault that he decided to have an affair. Yeah, I say something, dear. As Kevin's parents, we're going to take responsibility for the fact that our son cheated on his wife. I think that your parents should be held responsible for allowing their daughter to break up a happy marriage. Give us your parents' phone number. We're going to give them a call. Sarah and Aaron began to go through Tammy's bag. They took her smartphone from her bag and gave her parents a call. I was surprised at how quick to act Kevin's parents were. We apologize for our daughter's irresponsible behavior. Tammy's parents apologized to me profusely on behalf of their daughter. They promised me that Tammy would pay for the damages caused and that they would work on re-educating their daughter. Why do I have to pay money to Kevin's wife? I don't even know her. I'm not going to move back in with my parents. I'm going to be a beautiful bride to Kevin. Stop acting like a complete idiot. That's right. You don't have a say in this. You don't deserve to be happy after you broke up a marriage. You need to pay for your mistakes. I filed for divorce from Kevin that day. I was finally free of him, and after that, I never saw him again. Sarah and Aaron continue to send me the alimony and child support payments in Kevin's name. Tammy's parents also send me the money as promised. I thought that the terrible drama was finally over, but I was wrong. Wrong. One month after our divorce, I received a phone call from Kevin. Helen, you had to help me! I so regret not taking better care of you when we were married. I'm so sorry! Please save me from the hell that my parents have created for me! Please don't call me. Kevin, who are you talking to on the phone? You'd better not be calling Helen! We told you that you're not allowed to get in touch with Helen anymore! You're going to be punished if you break our rules. Kevin, we warned you! Please help me! I'm sorry! Please forgive me! After that, Kevin hung up the phone and I never heard from him again. I had no idea what happened to Kevin after that, but I bet it wasn't anything positive. One month later, I gave birth to a healthy baby girl. I named my baby Sophia. I knew that Kevin wasn't looking forward to having a baby, but for me, meeting Sophia was the best day of my life. I know that raising her on my own isn't going to be easy, but I don't want Sophia to be upset about the fact that she doesn't have a father. I was going to shower her with love so that she doesn't feel lonely. I want Sophia to grow up to be a kind girl with a big heart. Sophia, you're such a beautiful little girl. I'm starting to want a baby on my own, too. Well, you need to start finding a girlfriend for yourself, then. You're right. I wonder if there's any girl out there for me. My brother Alan was by my side the entire time. He was also a great uncle to Sophia. He worries about us and visits us often. I wish he'd focus on his own life more so that he can find time to make a girlfriend. How did you learn the trick of making my heartbeat stop? I'm curious. Well... Yes? My colleagues at work like to play silly pranks on me, and I was trying to come up with an idea to scare them. Well, I didn't think that it would become useful to me, too. Yeah, me neither. When I tried it on my colleagues, it didn't work, but it worked great with Kevin. When I did it myself, no one noticed I was gone, and someone locked up the office before they noticed I was still in the office. But now that I've succeeded once, I'm going to try it on my colleagues again. I'm so looking forward to the day that Sophia becomes big enough to join our little group that we can call ourselves a trio. I'm sure she'll grow up in no time. Do you see how fast she's picking up sounds? I bet she'll be talking soon. I bet she's going to grow up to be a genius. I can tell as her mother. I agree as her uncle as well. She's definitely a genius. Look, she's smiling at us. Sophia agrees too. I'm so looking forward to our trio. Yeah, same here. We're waiting for you, Sophia. I wasn't scared of raising Sophia on my own because I had a full cooperation from my brother. And I could already see that Sophia was growing up to be a cheerful and happy baby. I'd teach her the importance of being kind to others and being attentive to people's needs early on so that she doesn't grow up to be an immature adult like Kevin and Tammy. Trouble busters.